this architecture. So yeah, as I told you, at the hospital, I thought a lot about it. And so I made some notes. And um, after, after thinking uh, for a while, because I think it's almost a, a trick question, I thought that the closest it gets is probably that it's a, a selection of mental disorders, both for the ones who make it and for what comes out of the building, let's say. So I made a selection. I'm not a psychotherapist, but that, that was what came to my mind. It's at once like an antisocial behavior at, at some, some point, so. an attention deficit or like hyperactivity, both for architects and, uh, and buildings, I think. Um, then this kind of bipolarity or, or borderline behavior or disorder. A lot, I think, uh, exhibitionism for that one, especially for, for buildings, even though I don't know, you just came from the Biennale, so you probably know that it also counts for architects. Um, and then the grandiose delusions, I think, is, is very common for architecture, or is a good term what architecture can be. And then schizophrenia, I think that's the, the most common that it can be, or that the guys can be. And, and to write sometimes, you know, that, uh, like impulsively, there will be an answer and you cannot really control it. So, yeah. But um, then reflecting very profoundly on the question, because I think it's a trick question, so it's, uh, yeah. I, I'm not even sure if it's a noun or an adjective or even a verb, so at one point I asked myself the question, could it be a verb like, to, to architecture? Because in a way it can be anything, and IT architecture is something different than building architecture, so it can be, I mean, like an anatomy almost. Um, yeah, and same question goes then, is it a, a product thing, or is it a service? Is architecture service, or, or making and designing a product? So at the end I thought like, okay, uh, maybe it's not about the material object as in product, but more about uh, the process. But at least that's, that's where I see architecture, it's more about starting from something and going to something, and it's basically the process that it's about, and what is built is just a witness of the, the process. So yeah, as an answer I would say that architecture is not, but it's always just becoming. It becomes something and it comes from someone. Else. And what can architecture do? Um, yeah. I think that architecture can bring added value, both for like uh, singular persons or people and uh, for communities, without even saying that uh, or differentiating between architecture and urbanism, because I think that urbanism is also made out of like an absolute architecture that just interacts with the public space or even just open space. Um, so yeah, I, I, I uh, think there should be an, ambi an ambition for like uh, cultural or even social progress that can be materialized but also brought forward by good architecture that can really uh, be witnessing a, a cultural progress and just be a part of an yeah, ever-evolving history. Um, but then if you ask what, what can it do, I think that it can also be like a very miserable witness or quite of awkward manifestation of cultural uh, regress, if you want, or like a standstill or, or even social values that are yeah, not progressing in the same way that they were at a certain point. And so what can architecture do? I think it can be really uh, either sustaining uh, progress or at, uh, at the other hand, and I fear that it's uh, the growing concern that it can be really uh, quite miserable manifestation of something that will not morally or ethically or, or socially enhance our living environment. And how do you position yourself in this course? Yeah, that's the... So I think compared to all the other guys you, you have interviewed, I'm rather young and I think in Germany you would say green behind the ears. <laughs> no, but, um, uh, but seriously, I think at the moment, because all the people working in the office are, are the same age or even younger, so we are a really young office, and I think we all agree that we are currently really trying to unlearn unlearn from uh, 
what we have been taught uh, at school. Um, and I don't want to sound negative, but it's really, we have the feeling that, uh, you know, by learning to draw really aesthetically and formally, uh, drawing up perspective and facades, it's, it's, we feel that it, there's no sense anymore in, in doing so. Even though it's beautiful, I, I totally like beautiful drawings and, and stuff, but um, we feel that we have to really get rid of the, of the, the academic uh, formatting, like the formal standards that you were taught in a way even without knowing it or without your teachers uh, um, yeah, teaching it but you, know, you come out of school and you have this kind of formal reflex and basically you try to very often just play around with, with this language so we try to get rid of it just unlearn um, and I think at the moment that's uh, our position if you if you want just to really yeah, find a new sense in what we're doing without the, the formatage uh, that is very much based on, on academics, i.e. Uh, a very selected uh, elite of people trying to, to draw sleek and nice uh, buildings because I think the added value will just come out of really contextual, it can even be ugly, <clears throat> ugly, ugly processes, let's say, and uh, yeah, I would be happy to build something maybe ugly, but which is completely coherent and where people are completely satisfied with it, and maybe that is in ten years it will be absolutely beautiful. So that's the our position at the moment, but who knows where it will end in two years? And what is your design method? Do you have a design method? Yeah, I think when I read this question, I was like, okay, but you would say that you don't have a design method. And then finally, okay, let's be honest. It's, I, I think we have in the office the same scheme all over again. We get the brief or the demand, so we study the brief and demand. Then we study the context, we go, out, okay, what, what is it about? Then we study the client or the ones who put up the, the brief or the demand. And then basically we rewrite the demand, so basically just say, okay, this you don't need, or you, you, it should be different. And, uh, and so we're limited to writing a set of key questions, like, okay, uh, uh, well basically, and, and this set of key questions will have to be answered, or, yeah, or even the question has to be answered, and the answer is just put uh, into space, and, and that's a design process. And this sounds abstract, but it's really summed up. It's, it's this uh, study uh, brief, context, client, in the broader sense, rewrite, brief, um, yeah, and ask questions and answer to questions, point. And I think that the rest is really just playing around with models and 3Ds and uh, collages and just finding the most coherent and radical answer or <clears throat> materialization to the question or to the answer and when it's without so much compromise it's uh, it's the right answer that's it